Insurance companies are long-term investors, which could be valuable to overall growth. But unfortunately, some of the, some of the risk regulation in Solvency II forces insurance companies to focus very much on the short term. If a large insurance company would fail, if some of the policyholders would experience losses, then households may no longer trust insurance companies and may not insure themselves as much. It would expose them to the risks of health risks or longevity risk, living too long, or the risk of suddenly dying uh, and experiencing large income shocks. Secondly, there's linkages from the insurance sector to the banking sector. Banks provide funding to certain parts of the insurance sector. And the other way around, insurance companies invest in, in some of the corporate bonds that are issued by, by banks. Thirdly, insurance companies are among the largest investors in, in corporate bonds. Uh, so if an insurance company would fail, it could have an impact on, on corporate bond markets. Some of the challenges in the regulation now of insurance companies is that there's different regulatory frameworks in different parts of the world. And in addition, some of the large insurance companies have been designated as systemically important and they face another set of regulation. So an insurance company is really facing very different frameworks and gets very different signals in terms of like which risks to, to manage. There's a couple of, of important themes in, in the work that we are doing that could, could inform regulation uh, and future generations of, of regulation. So one of the things we know is that there's an important interaction between accounting rules and how they are used in regulation. So understanding the consequences of that interaction is, is, particularly, is particularly important. Once you get a mismatch, for instance, between accounting rules that give the wrong incentives to insurance companies to satisfy the regulation, but in fact, it turns out that insurance companies are then taking on more risk. These things are, are clearly undesirable. So it's really thinking through what are the unintended consequences of, of, of the current regulation and how we, can we, can we fix, fix those. Um, and one of the, the issues that, that people are worried about at the moment, in particular in the context of Solvency II, is that it's too much a short-term regulation. So insurance companies are long-term investors, which could be valuable to, the, to, to overall growth. But unfortunately, some of, the, some of the risk regulation in Solvency II forces insurance companies to focus very much on the short term. So thinking about how we can um, use insurance companies as long-term investors while at the same time ensuring uh, the soundness of, of the insur insurance system is, is, is a big challenge going forward. The other part that is important is to understand the different loopholes and regulatory arbitrages that exist. So currently you see that insurance companies are setting up different organizational structures to really take advantage of, of gaps in the regulation and closing these gaps is important both within, let's say, the United States or within Europe, but also between the different regulations. So for instance, the regulation for banks and, and the regulation for insurance companies, because a lot of these organizations, uh, in particular in Europe, have different divisions, one that, that is, that's, that's banking, the other one insurance. I think the first main takeaway from the work that we have now is that we need a lot more transparency. Given the data that is available, it is, uh, it is, is quite doable to understand the risk exposure of insurance companies. But what you really care about is the risk mismatch. So what are the risks that you see on the asset side and the liability side of the balance sheet and how are those out of line? Given the, the current data that we have, these are, this is very hard to assess. What would be extremely helpful is to get, first of all, more transparency and then start to think about frameworks in terms of how to regulate insurance companies. And what is also important there is to, to provide enough data so that academics and regulators can get into these issues and, and analyze how to, how to move the sector forward.